All right, so monosaccharides, we frequently see drawn in this linear type form like you see on the screen here. However, um, most commonly they're found in a cyclic form or in a ring form. Um, when I say most commonly, it's somewhere around 99.95 or 99.98% of the sugars that are found in your body actually, actually exist in the cyclic form. So because of that, we want to be able to make sure we can draw and recognize that cyclic form. So um, the next few slides kind of take you through the logistics and how you go from the linear form like this to the ring form. Um, I'm going to go through those slides kind of briefly, and then we're going to do a sample problem. And on that sample problem, I'm going to give you the shortcut, which I think is probably kind of appropriate for you guys to learn to draw it on. So first off, I'm only going to expect you to learn how to draw this so with um, aldehyde sugars, and then they're only also going to be with hexoses. So I'm only expecting you to be able to draw this with aldohexoses. But regardless of the aldohexose that you would get, you should be able to draw the appropriate ring. All right, so first off, here are our, here, here's our six carbon sugar, right, that is... Um, it's linear, and you can see them numbered carbons one through six. And the idea here is that your carbonyl group, which is this one, is going to react with this particular OH that's right there. Um, and really, specifically, what happens is this OH comes up and attacks that um, carbonyl group. But again, that's probably a little more detail than we need right now. All right, so... The first step in kind of drawing it, they say, is to rotate it 90 degrees. So you rotate it 90 degrees um, clockwise specifically because it, it does matter the way you do it. So you rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, and then you kind of twist it around a little bit to make it so that the OH from carbon 5, which is this one right here, is closest to that carbonyl group, that CHO that you see. Um, and then the bond forms between those, and you end up with two different products. Um, you end up with uh, two different, what we refer to as anomers. Oh, anomers are another type of isomer. So anomers specifically refer to the location of the OH on this new chiral carbon that you formed. So if you go back to the previous slide, you'll notice that right here, that was a CHO, which was, remember, a CHO is really C double bonded to O, um, bonded to an H, and then there were, was the other bond coming from the carbon, right? So that's what that looks like. And then whenever we draw the new product, we lose that C double bond to O, and because of that, we actually make a new chiral center because that particular carbon that we're looking at here and here now bond to four different things. There's an H, there's an OH, there's an O, and then there's a carbon on the other side. So that's the four different bonds. So it's a new chiral center. And the idea of the alpha and the beta anomers just basically means where you have the OH. If the OH is down, it's going to be alpha. And if the OH is up, it's going to be beta. Um, sometimes people would ask me, like, oh, well, how do I know if I draw it up or down? And the answer is you don't know just from looking at a structure. You actually form both of these which is why there's a plus sign in the middle here, um, you form both of them. And now the relative ratios between them are going to differ, but usually like if it was a test or something like that, I would say, okay, draw the alpha form of this particular um, aldohexo. So draw the beta form, right? And whenever I say alpha or beta, that's going to indicate where that OH goes, all right? Um, so, for instance, for glucose, I mentioned, like, there's a mixture of the two. You can see that there's 63% of the beta form and 37% in the alpha form. And then it says here, the aldehyde C double bond O, there's a trace. And what it means by the aldehyde C double bond O, that means that you have kind of the linear or the acyclic form. And that's what you see up here, acyclic. Um, I call it linear because even though it kind of has it shown twisted around, that's like a linear structure, right? There's no, there's not that extra bond there. And all of these structures are in equilibrium with each other. Um, you can see the equilibrium arrows right here, 
But the idea is that the equilibrium is heavy to the alpha or the beta side. In this case, it's even more of the beta side because you can see that 63%. Um, there's very, very little of that linear form that exists. And really, the only time it, it, it's there is whenever, like in order to go from the alpha to the beta form, which can happen, it doesn't go there directly. It goes alpha to the aldehyde, then aldehyde to beta. So you have that transition occurring sometimes. Um, so this word here, when it says like a trace amount, a trace amount just means a really, really small amount. It's measurable, but it's, for instance, as you can see here, it's less than 1%. And even in, you know, in your body, it's about 0.02% more or less. Um, really close to that 0.02% number. Okay, so let's um, take this structure, which is D-galactose and, and draw it. And you could go through that whole process of rotating it 90 degrees clockwise and then twisting it around. Um, or you can just do the shortcut. And the shortcut is going to be like this. So I want you to draw a six-membered ring with an O in the upper right-hand corner. So we're going to go like this, a six-membered ring with an O in the upper right-hand corner. So in doing that, we can actually go through and number our carbons. We could say this is going to be carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5. And you'll see the one thing that we're missing is 6, right? We only have 5 carbons there. So carbon 6 is going to go after 5. You're going to go up to 6, and this is going to be our CH2OH. So if we were to number the linear ones, we would have carbon 1, 2, 3, four, five, and six. Okay, so the this particular O that's in our upper right hand corner here, that O is going to be this O, right? That's the one that's part of the ring. That's the important one that forms a bond with carbon one. Um, all right, so next up is we have to draw all the H's and OH's on everything. So I'm going to start with carbon 2. So the OH is on the right here on carbon 2, which means it's going to go down. And the H is going to go up. So you can either remember that the right is going to be down and left is up, or you can think if you were to take that galactose molecule, that linear one that you're looking at on the left, and if you were to rotate it clockwise 90 degrees, the OH is going to be down. Right? And that's one of the reasons why I like to go through those other slides, even though I give you the shortcut. That rotation of 90 degrees clockwise can help you remember where um, the H and OH is relative to the, to the circle here, or the ring here. So on carbon 3, we're going to basically, you can draw a line here. The OH goes up. The H is down because that OH is on the left. On carbon 4, the OH goes up and the H goes down. Now on carbon 5, we don't do that because the OH that's on carbon 5 is that one that's in the ring. And then carbon 6, we don't have to worry about it because it's just going to be that CH2OH that's up there. So we're almost done here, except carbon 1. And carbon 1 is that anomeric carbon that we um, can have the OH can be up or down. However, our problem here says draw the alpha isomer. Or in this case, we could actually more specifically name that type of isomer as an anomer. And alpha means it's going to be down. And H would go up. Now, if it said to draw the beta form, you would draw that exact same thing, ex except the only thing that you would flip-flop would be um, this H and OH. Right, so this is where you're going to have alpha versus beta. So alpha down and beta would be up. All right, so make sure you know how to draw the cyclic forms of this from the linear structure. Draw the, the six-membered ring with the O in the upper right-hand corner. The extra CH2OH on top connected to carbon-5. Um, OHs that are on the right go down, OHs on the left go up. And then on carbon 1, you look to see whether it's an alpha or a beta anomer, and you can draw it from there. So the previous examples showed you how to draw aldohexoses. 
Um, we also have keto hexoses like fructose, which is shown here. Um, these also form the cyclic, uh, cyclic forms. Um, these ones tend to form five-membered rings, so they're going to look a little bit different. And it's the same principle where you have the OH group here attacking the carbonyl carbon over here. Um, and as a result, we're going to end up with kind of one, two, three, four, five pieces in the ring. I'm not expecting you to be able to draw these necessarily, but you should be able to um, pick them out. And the reason I say you should be able to pick them out is because they look different. So if you look at the alpha isomer and then the beta isomer over here, um, the main thing you should see is that these rings are five members. These rings have um, look more like a pentagon with the O up at top. And you'll see that there's CH2 there, CH2OH there, and a CH2OH there. So in both of the, the places, you're going to, in both, both sides of that, you're going to see your CH2OHs. So in total, you're still going to have six carbons, right? Carbon one, carbon two on the ring there, three on the ring, four, five, and then carbon six out there. So you still have six carbons, but now you have two of them not on the ring. Now, if you look at the, let me clear those pen markings here just so we can look at for a second. Um, so if you look over here, this one, notice you have a CH2OH up and the OH down. That's going to be where your carbon one was. And then on this side, you have a CH2OH up and then an H down. So that's going to be where your carbon, this one here would have been carbon five, and then up there would be carbon six from your original um, ring. So on the beta fructose, notice the difference here. The OH is up instead of down, whereas on the one on the alpha, right, alpha means that the OH here is actually going to be down. So fructose, again, I want you to be able to pick out the five-membered ring, and then you should be able to identify that as having come from a ketohexose instead of an aldohexose. All right, so now I want to look at a couple more reactions um, with monosaccharides, so that cyclization that we just looked at to the reaction. Um, and this is going to be a slightly different reaction than we, that we look at here. So basically with these sugars, they can undergo redox reactions. So remember, redox or oxidation reduction reactions, whenever we learned it, I taught you guys the mnemonic device of oil rig, where oxidation is losing, reduction is gaining. And back then we were talking about electrons. We said oxidation is losing or gaining, a, or sorry, oxidation is losing electrons, reduction is gaining of electrons. But on the slide, whenever we learned it back then, I also said that oxidation can also be losing hydrogens, or reduction can be gaining hydrogens. And I said that would come up later in the class, and this is the point where it comes up. So the carbonyl group of an aldose is reduced to an alcohol with H2, with a PD catalyst. So this is going to be the catalyst, right, that we put on top of the arrow that isn't used in the reaction. Um, so this reaction, you can think of a couple ways. One is going to be a reduction, right, reduction in terms of gaining hydrogens, in this case, instead of electrons, even though there, it really is gaining electrons as well because these hydrogens come with electrons. But instead of H2, I drew out an H and an H here. And the way this reaction is going to work is 1H is going to come up here and go to that C, and the other H is going to come over here to that oxygen, and we're going to lose the double bond. Um, so again, you're going to break the double bond and draw two new bonds. So let me rewrite this over here on the right. Um, so we're going to have C double bonded to O bonded to H. And I'm going to write the exact same thing that was up there now, and I'm going to um, erase as I draw the new structure. So the stuff down here that I'm drawing now is basically, I don't want to say irrelevant, but it's irrelevant to what we're doing with this reaction. And the whole business on the reaction is going to occur up in this part. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the double bond between the C double bond to O, and we're going to break that double bond to have a single bond. Now we're going to draw two new bonds. This should sound familiar from whenever we had um, the reactions that we did in Chapter 11 when we did kind of addition reactions. Break the double bond, draw two new bonds. 
which is what I have now. What goes into those new bonds? Well, one H goes here, and then the other H is going to go here. All right, and that's what the product is going to look like. Notice now in that area that's circled, we have a C bound to an H, bound to another H, bound to an OH, which you could also write as CH2OH. In other words, it could look like exactly like that. Um, that CH2OH is down at the bottom of the molecule as well. You could write it in either way. All right, so that's going to be a reduction um, of an aldose. And now the other reaction is that that aldehyde can be oxidized. So oxidized means it's going to basically be converted to a carboxylic acid. So oxidized in this case is going to gain, um, it, it's gaining the OH, but it, it's really losing a hydrogen. So remember oil rig oxidation is uh, losing. So in this case, we're going to lose this hydrogen there. So that hydrogen is going to go away, and in place of it, we're going to get that OH. So the product here is going to be C double bonded to O, bonded to OH, and then everything else is going to stay the same. So we can draw these other carbons just the same with an OH there, there, and there. And then everything else is going to stay the same. And that would be your product. So again, reduction, we're going to gain the hydrogens. And in the oxidation, we're going to lose the hydrogen. Um, the other way you can memorize this is just by memorizing your functional group. So in this case, in the oxidation, we're going to form a carboxylic acid. Right, that's going to be your carboxylic acid, and then in your uh, reduction reaction, you're going to form an alcohol, and that's what this CH2OH is. This turns it into an alcohol. So either way you want to memorize it, they both work.